Hello students, welcome to the EBG e Patshala. I am Dr. M. N. Gupta, Emeritus Professor from Department of Biochemical Engineering in Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about a module, the first module in fact on neutral fats and this is under the paper structure and function of biomolecules 2. Fats and oils are called neutral fats. However, as we mentioned in the last module, endogenous lipases or chemicals result in slow hydrolysis of the ester bonds. As we know from school chemistry, ester bond is susceptible to both acids as well as alkalis. Hence, some free fatty acids called FFA are invariably present in the fats and oils. Hence, we have the curious situation of talking of acid value of a neutral fat or oil. The objectives of this module are as follows. We learn about the major oils obtained from various, various plant sources and their fatty acid composition. We learn about the importance of the free fatty acid content with a rice bran as an important example. We will also learn about the fat splitting process to obtain fatty acids from oils of fats and we will also learn a little bit about the desirable properties of the fats and oils. So, the concept map is very simple. We will talk about these oils and fats which are called neutral lipids. We will talk about their fatty acid composition. We will talk about the free fatty acid content. We will talk about the fatty spl fat splitting and we will talk about the desirable properties from the nutritional point aspect. So, let us start. Biochemists look at the fat or oil as the source of concentrated energy. 1 gram fat on an average produces twice as much energy as 1 gram of carbohydrate or protein. The source of this energy in fats or oils is the hydrocarbon chain in the long chain fatty acids which esterify the glycerol. Biotechnologists have always been interested in how to obtain oil in an environment friendly way. Lately, focus has been on developing the biorefinery concept because the question was or the issue was that the after the oil is extracted, the industry mostly used to throw away rest of the plant or even the part, the seed or the fruit from where they were extracting oil. Gradually, about the last decade or decade or two decades, people have realized that the rest of the material need not be thrown away. This can be used for obtaining value added products. So, valorization is a very important concept today in biotechnology. That is what biorefinery concept is all about. Oils and fats are triglycerides. However, most of the oils and fats are not a single triglyceride. So, in these different triglycerides, 
the nature of the fatty acid chains are different. So when we talk of the composition of a fat or oil in terms of a fatty acid, we are merely referring to the sum total of the fatty acid present in different triglycerides which constitute or which are a part of this that particular fat or oil. In the last quarter of the last century, the production and consumption of the fats and oils rose by average rate of 3 to 7 percent per year. In 2004 and 5, just to illustrate, this was estimated to be about 136 million tons. The edible oils which are mostly obtained from plant seeds are evaluated on the basis of certain parameters. The standards for the quality control are given in AOCS, Official Methods and Recommended Handbook or in the IUPAC Standard Methods for the analysis of oils, fat and derivatives. Some of these parameters for the many oils are shown in this table. One such important parameter is the amount of free fatty acid content in the oil. A major source of this free fatty acid content is the oil or fat hydrolysis catalyzed by endogenous lipases. The free fatty acid content is determined by high performance liquid chromatography or gas chromatography. Rice bran oil is a good example of this. Rice bran and polish is the source of this oil. Rice bran is about 5 to 8 percent of rough rice and polish is about 2 to 3 percent of the same. Some perspective about the importance of rice bran as an oil source can be gained by comparing its fat content which is 15 to 20 percent to the corresponding figure in the wheat bran which is only 3 to 4 percent. The rice bran oil production as a byproduct of rice milling started in USA in the late 1950s. By 1980s most of this production was stopped as it was not found profitable as a commercial activity. There were few developments which created resurgence in its production and ironically today rice bran oil is considered a premium oil. So let's look at how, how did it all happen, what were the developments, what changed the scene. So the first was learning how to prevent excess free fatty acid content of the oil. Most important, the observation that the rice bran oil contains orizinol which was found to be a serum cholesterol lowering compound led to the rice brine oil emerging as an important edible oil worldwide. So technological developments often shape market prices. At one time rice brine was used as just animal feed or in aquaculture. Till recently in India that was the prime use of the rice bran obtained by rice mills. Rice bran has a lipase 
which has been studied fairly extensively. So during milling, 60% of the lipase present in the testa cross layer of the grains get mixed with oil present in the aleurone sub aleurone and the germ as much as 5 to 7 percent free fatty acid content increase has been reported this presence of the free fatty acids in the oil lends a undesirable and unpleasant soapy taste Simultaneous presence of lipoxygenase catalyzes oxidative damage which produces more off flavors and some off orders. Treatment of the rice bran by dry heat, wet heat and extrusion are some important methods for inactivating these enzymes. This process is called stabilization of rice bran. Caustic refining is part of oil refining process in which free fatty acids are removed from the crude edible oils. It also removes at least partially phospholipids and colored impurities. In fact, degumming to remove gummy phospholipids is generally carried out before caustic refining. So caustic refining completes the degumming process. In case degumming is not a part of the operations, caustic refining is conventionally carried out as a first step in the oil processing. If caustic refining is not done at early stages, Subsequent refining steps convert colored materials with darker products and some other impurities may result in cloudy oil due to their precipitation. Initially, free fatty acid content is measured and dilute sodium hydroxide is mixed in slight excess to ensure neutralization and removal of other impurities. This amount has to be decided very carefully as any excess will start alkali catalyzed hydrolysis of oil to form more free fatty acid. While free fatty acid neutralization is very fast and is over nearly instantaneously, Process is prolonged to ensure degumming and removal of other impurities. This process time differs from oil to oil. For soybean oil, little more than or about 5 minutes is required. On the other hand, for corn oil, less time is generally beneficial. The caustic refining is completed by heating to separate soap, whatever is formed and other impurities. While it causes significant amount of loss of oil, caustic refining remains a method of choice to reduce free fatty acid content. One of the common product category in oil processing plants are emulsifiers or biosurfactants. The range of such bioproducts include monoglycerides and diglycerides, propylene glycerol esters, lecithin, sorbitan esters, etc. Monoglycerides and diglycerides are the most common emulsifiers which are made by oil processing industries. While these are partial hydrolytic products of fats or oils during fat splitting to produce free fatty acid and glycerol, 
their industrial importance has led to several strategies being developed. Monoglycerides can be produced by, for example, by esterification of fatty acids with glycerol. In another approach, these can be produced by reacting salts of fatty acids with glycerol halohydrines. In the third approach, transesterification of triglycerides with glycerol is carried out. The first two methods involve use of fatty acids or their alkali metal or silver salts. The direct esterification often result in a mixture of monoglycerides, diglycerides and triglycerides. The composition of this mixture varies with the type of fatty acid, ratio of glycerol to fatty acid, catalyst used for this reaction and few other reaction conditions. Often mono and diglycerides are predominant reaction products. Due to acyl migration from position 2 of glycerol backbone to position 1 or equivalent position 3 on the glycerol backbone, the, gly the diglycerides produced are generally 1,3 diglycerides. <clears throat> we will discuss later on that lipases can be used to obtain monoglycerides or diglycerides. What is more, fatty acids can be esterified by variety of alcohols to produce diverse kinds of compounds which find applications as flavoring agents, fragrances and other biosurfactants. Hydrolysis of fat or oil to produce fatty acids and glycerol is industrially known as fat splitting. This process is the key to the manufacture of fatty acids, soaps, fatty alcohols and other oleochemicals. As shown in the slide, industrial level process consists of introducing the oil from the bottom of the reaction which is called splitter and it runs into the water stream coming from the top. A mixture of diglycerides and monoglycerides is always present. At distillation temperature, these react with the desired product fatty acids to form triglycerides. This reversible reaction produces significant losses. The degree of split which is known in industry as a DOS value is equal to percentage of free fatty acids in the product stream. The target DOS in a successful fat splitting process is more than 98.5 percent. The temperature in the splitter is kept at 230 to 265 degrees centigrade temperature range so that the water is able to mix with oil. Fats with short chain fatty acids require less temperature to mix with water. The water stream apart from acting as the reactant also removes glycerol. Removal of this product drives the reaction towards fatty acids production and prevents the reverse reaction. The fatty acid production was started in early years of last century to produce stearic acid for candles. Stearic acid and oleic acid were the primary fatty acids produced by oleochemical industry. Five vegetable oils lead the list of oils which are responsible for the increase 
in production level of oils soya bean oil palm oil palm kernel oil and rape seed or canola canola oil little less increase has resulted from oils from cotton seed peanut sesame corn olive coconut linseed and the castor the animal fats whose production or consumption have increased is butter lard tallow and fish oil for vegetable oils increased area of cultivation and yields have both contributed to these enhancements about 80% is used as food rest is utilized either as feed or by oleochemical industries the food applications include their use as frying oils and in bake, baking fats spread salad oils and confectionery fats and ice cream some oil sources such as peanuts beef lamb pork chicken and fish eaten as such constitute another category of consumption of fats or oils given their applications it's logical that for each application the fat or oil has a list of ideal properties crystallization and melting properties are two such key properties for example salad oils which crystallize during storage are not acceptable for incorporating in spreads the solid fat fat content of at 4 degree centigrade should be less than 30 to 40% otherwise the spread cannot be used immediately after taking out of the refrigerator at the same time enough solid content is required at ambient temperature as well in the mouth temperature the fat should completely melt otherwise mouth feel quality will not be acceptable the spread will taste like waxy material fats form beta dash and beta kind of crystals fats which form beta dash type crystals are preferable in spreads since these contain a small in size and trap good amount of liquid oil and have desirable look on the surface oils with fatty acids with mixed chain lengths of c16 to c18 range tend to form beta dash type crystals on the other hand oils with just c18 fatty acids are more likely to form beta form of crystals in fact textural properties of fats are important in the context of their use in wide range of products such as lipstick chocolate butter whipped cream ice cream and margarine for processed food mouth feel is an important property many properties collectively decide the texture of fat rich product <clears throat> structure of triglycerides solid fat content melting and crystallization properties are some of these important parameters we have already discussed the importance of crystallinity in spreads many factors influence crystallinity and operate differently in bulk form and when fats are present as emulsions which is the case with processed food in large number of cases the presence of unsaturated fatty acids and the polyunsaturated fatty acids in triglycerides makes the latter prone to oxidation in materials like paints this results in deterioration of the films in food it leads to rancidity and becomes noticeable even at lower level the oxidation of fats or oils follows broadly two mechanisms in auto oxidation the reaction occurs with triplet oxygen in the second route photo oxidation more reactive singlet oxygen is involved the photo oxidation besides the obvious need of light also requires a photosensitizer nevertheless in both unsaturated hydroperoxides are formed these are unstable and break down into some short chain molecules which include aldehydes these are responsible for the undesirable odor and of smell oxidation is facilitated by heat light metal ions and initiators all such factors are called pro oxidants presence of antioxidants prevents 
development of these undesirable traits fats or oils even in refined form are likely to contain both prooxidant as well as antioxidants obviously increasing amount of antioxidants would enhance oxidative stability of fats or oils primary antioxidants are radical scavengers and can inhibit initiation and propagation steps of the free radical process molecules with extended unsaturated systems such as carotin can also act as primary antioxidant by forming an addition product secondary antioxidants include metal chelators these include amino acids metal ions promote initiation step by reacting with hydroperoxide so these metal chelators tie up with the metal ions use of appropriate surfactant is known to result in formation of emulsions in which metal ion hydroperoxide contact is prevented ascorbyl palmitate is the lipid soluble derivative of ascorbic acid and acts as an oxygen scavenger presence of phospholipids is also known to prevent oxidation by some ill understood mechanisms however in refining the aim is to degum the oil by removing phospholipids naturally occurring antioxidants like tocopherols for example vitamin e sesame oil sesame oil which occurs in the sesame oil orizinols which occur in rice bran oil also help in preventing oxidation in their respective oils tocopherols and tocotrienols are widely present in oils of plant origin normally this activity is supplemented by adding ascorbyl palmitate at 200 to 500 ppm level many synthetic compounds mostly phenols such as butylated hydroxy anisole which is abbreviated as bha and has a trade name of e320 butylated butylated hydroxy toluene abbreviated as bht with the trade name of e321 propyl gallate which is called pg or e310 and tertiary butyl hydroxy quinone normally called simply as tbhq are examples of the widely used synthetic compounds which are used to stabilize oil and fat containing food effects of the antioxidants vary from oil to oil as fatty acid composition is a critical parameter temperature is another critical parameter some of the antioxidants are volatile so storage temperature are important many antioxidants have a synergy in preventing oxidation the major oil already indicated constitute about 20% of all fat or oil production that is not to say that fats or oils from other sources are not important cocoa butter is needed for chocolates and cannot be substituted directly by any other oil the cocoa bean which is theobroma cacao is used for producing cocoa powder and cocoa butter both are used in chocolates as with other fats or oils its uniqueness originates in the fatty acid composition of the triglycerides which constitute it these compositions are shown in the figure cocoa butter has 26% palmitic acid 34% stearic acid and 35% folic acid the major triglycerides are pop post and stost where p stands for palmitic acid o for oleic acid 
and st for stearic acid the approximate percentage ranges of these triglycerides are pop in the range of 18 to 23% post in the range of 36 to 41% and sto st in the range of 23 to 31% it is to be noted that all triglycerides here are of symmetrical nature with identical saturated fatty acid at the terminal carbon atoms and oleic acid in the middle at position 2. The typical values for major triacyl glycerols in tropical fats which can be used as partial replacements for cocoa butter are shown in this table. The result is a fat with a melting point marginally below average mouth temperature attempts to obtain other triglycerides with similar melting profiles have been made legally unless specifications are adhered to products containing such triglycerides cannot be called chocolate these are called confectionery according to european union specifications chocolate is allowed to have a small amount of palm mid fraction or one or more of the other tropical fats which are listed here. The detailed fatty acid composition of selected vegetable oils is shown here. These common vegetable oils are groundnut, cottonseed, corn, olive, sesame, rice bran and linseed. Among some common vegetable oils, linseed oil has high level of linolenic acid. Some others also have high percentage content of oleic and or linoleic acid. Among vegetable oils, cotton seed and rice bran oils have higher levels of palmitic acid. Both sesame and rice bran oils because of their high oxidative stability are used as blends to increase the average oxidative stability. Sesame oil also contains sesamine, sesamoline and other lignans which are strong antioxidants. Olive oil on the other hand has polyphenols which are capable of using as strong antioxidants. The groundnut is also known as a peanut oil. So in this module we learnt about oils from plants and their fatty acid composition, we learnt about importance of free fatty acid content in oil refining, we also looked at the fat splitting process at the industrial level and we learnt about the desirable properties of fats and oils. It may also be worthwhile to look at the composition of several important and the top five sources of oils and fats. Increasingly oleochemical industries looks for oils which are known to have health benefits. Hence the increasing market penetration for oils like olive oil, rice brine oil and safola. Also it makes economic sense to look for uses for the spent meal left after oil has been isolated from the seed or fruit etc. Thank you.